So good. So problem 2-2 starts with prepare a balance sheet as of June 30 for JL Gregory Company using the following data. So if you are pressed for time, I would always um, want that there are just three columns if you're going to do it, whatever, for your um, assignments. Okay, so the first line is going to be JL Gregory Company balance sheet. This is for June 13, 20XX. Okay, and we want this three as middle um, centered. Okay, so we will have to put all of this. I don't want to. I will go to the book and try to copy and paste so I don't have to write everything. Let us see if it will allow me. It will allow me up to E79, up to marketable securities. Let's see if I can actually, with a PDF file, I cannot do that, but I'm trying to do it with, yes. Okay. Um, no, it's not like that. You can see how I posted it. I'll try to do it. Paste is special. Keep source with. No, didn't do that. I'll try again. And then I go to my Excel. Paste is special. Didn't do it. Okay. So at least now that we have it here on site, probably I can just um, put this. Okay, so we see it, as we see it, we will post it, okay? So accounts payable, 240, but it will not copy it, 241. Okay, accounts payable is current asset. So now we have cash for 89. How come I always do that? And then accounts receivable, Unless there any anything else there, we will put it here, accounts receivable after uh, cash. But I think if there are marketable securities, we will place the marketable securities. And then equipment that cost, I'll put it a little lower, just in case there are other accounts, um, accounts, there are other current assets, I'll put equipment a little bit, uh, one line below, okay? And we look, I will look for depreciation. So there is depreciation in buildings. So I will put, the reason why I am putting a column is we want to um, be able to add first or deduct or get the net of equipment. Um, I see their equipment, there is a accumulated depreciation. Then there are buildings. Um, so, Accrued uh, accounts receivable, we have it. Accrued expenses, what are accrued expenses? I mentioned it last week that these are expenses not yet paid. That's why we're accruing them yet. We're still going to pay them. So accrued expenses is 107. Okay, let me remove this. Estimated tax liability. So by the name by itself, we already know it is a liability, but it still is um, estimated. Hundred twenty-five, and then next is accumulated depreciation on buildings. Now that we have the buildings, I put equipment lower. Normally, we start with the land which is not depreci depreciated, then we go for the buildings. Uh, the buildings are... So less accumulated depreciation. The buildings is less 538. And then we have accumulated depreciation on equipment. 
we will just copy this. Equipment is 386. I'll make that net. Okay, are you following? So I have missed out on, no, the inventory is not exactly. I'll just look into it. this. Bonds payable, we can put this here. And you can say, can we distinguish current asset from long-term assets? It depends, depend, it depends if there are many accounts. We have to categorize them. But if this is the only long-term liability, probably not. But this is not a hard um, this is not a hard rule in accounting. So later on, I can um, improve the format. And then buildings at cost is 1120. And then capital stock, you can put that here, is 1 million. And then cash is 89. Equipment is 761. Mm, okay, I'm just seeing that the way I copied it earlier, is not very reliable. Not very reliable. Okay, cash 89. Can you put in the chat? Can you tell me you put your mic on if there is um, something I am missing out here? Okay, that's it. I saw it now. Um, inventories. I want three. Investment in the peerless company. So we can just move this here. twenty land at cost I told you no we should have given um, some space for land no depreciation for it um marketable securities you know why marketable securities come before um, accounts receivable? Do you remember my explanation for it? Okay, it's more liquid. Okay, thank you. So actually, it can be sold tomorrow. It can be sold anytime using the internet. You can already post that it's for sale. Whereas with accounts receivable, you still have to call. You have to follow up. There are some um, debtors who are still hiding. So it's not as easy to convert to cash. Okay, good. And then notes payable, uh, notes payable will come a little bit um, below the account, the um, current liabilities, okay, 200. Okay, so with the buildings, you can rule this and then you can just um, add this. Actually, the dark, but this is our, okay, hold on. This is at this one, buildings, at this one. And then another one, add, add. So I'm going to rule this. So what we will have here, what we will have in this total, I can total this only, this is, um, this is non-current, okay? non-current liabilities, non-current assets. And this are, doesn't say if investment is a long-term asset. Yeah. Where did you put investments? Others, okay, fine. We can, uh, we can put it under other assets. Because it doesn't say we would assume it's a uh, long term.
So we can put here, I will pull this um, and then add all. So is that correct? 1486. And then we have 1187. Rule this. So actually, I mean, there's a single rule for the totals that you would want to include in the grand total. And the grand total that we have is total asset. We will add current plus this one plus other assets. Are there other assets? 2993. Did you get that? 2993. Okay. Now this one needs a double rule because this is like the grand total for the left side. Okay. And then here, I suppose the bonds payable. Well, we will just make it total asset, a uh, total liabilities. Somehow for me, it's no use of putting this um, in another category. So all of this, and now this total single rule. And then with the capital stock, we have to put retained earnings. And that is the question mark. So this is question mark. So if we put total liabilities and, and owner's equity, So it should actually be 2993. Okay, so we have to get this one less this one less this one, 620. I suppose you got that. So basically this is total owner's equity. Um, no, this is stockholder's equity. Let's call it stockholder's equity. Single rule. Again, single rule. Mm, this one is double rule. Okay, and then we have to make this like currencies. We won't put any more the dollar account. So that looks uh, like, um, I think for, for one group, if you can see, did you have a total for the balance sheet? There is no balance sheet that does not have any total. Okay, so improving that in succeeding um, assignments. Okay, so now we go to our problem 2-4. And I have copied and pasted here in the Excel file, in the worksheet, the assignment. Now we have to look into the book, what it says about partnerships. So we're going to go and also copy and paste whatever it says there. So I'm gonna do that now. And then, where did we? Okay, so we are guided by the text from the book about partnership, how it will show the capital account for each partner. And if we're going to be asked for the reconciliation, this is how it should um, show the beginning capital plus the earnings plus the drawings is the ending capital account. So let's go to the problem. It says D. Carson and F. Ligat formed a partnership on June 1 to operate a shoe store. So let's be. So Carson contributed 50,000 cash and Ligat contributed 50,000 worth of shoe inventory. During the month of June, the following transactions took place. So we have five descriptions of the transactions and what are we being asked? Repair balance sheet as of June 1, that's the first. Second, prepare a reconciliation of the beginning and ending balances for each capital account, and then prepare a balance sheet as of June 30. So since it says here that a proprietorship or partnership balance sheet also may show as reconciliation of the beginning and ending balances, we will do that for the June 30 balance sheet. 
Okay, so let's begin with the first requirement, letter A. So let's just say this is the Carson and Ligon shoe store. Balance sheet or statement of uh, financial position as of June 1, 20. So what are we being asked here? Let's start with um, cash. That's um, 50,000. And then that's coming from the Carson Capital. 50,000. And then Lee got contributed inventory. 50,000. That's coming from F. Lee got. Capital fifty thousand. So the transactions that will already be during the month of June. So we will um already close this. And this is total assets. And how do they call it? Let's go back to here. Total partners, total partners capital. It should be total liabilities. There are no liabilities right now. So total partners capital. And remember the double rule. Okay. So now let's begin uh, letter C, B and C together. The reconciliation will be shown in the balance sheet. I will copy this. And then let's try to copy this. Let's just um, insert a few more things here. Okay, so this one should actually show all the things here plus this one, everything. No, wait, I'm going to put here. And I'm going to on. Okay, the first transaction, additional shoe inventory was purchased at a cost of 24,000 cash. So that will minimize the cash by 24,000. It will increase inventory by 24,000. So here, all the transactions happen in the asset part, the left side. Number two, total cash sales for the month were 31,000. The inventory that was sold had a cost of 15,500. So what we can do right now is, um, since these are just five transactions, we can just do them individually. We don't need to come up with a separate reconciliation, separate income summary. So we'll do that basically using this. So this is the capital. I'll change this. This is June 30. They say this capital um, as of. So we'll just say As of June 30, we're trying to arrive at the capital as of June 30. Sorry, as of June 1, this is as of June 1. So we can add what it is mentioned here as earnings for June the same here so if there's cash of 31,000 we can divide that 31,000 divided by 2 the same, 15,500, okay? Mm, we had 
received cash of 31,000 for the cash sales. The inventory had a cost of 15,500. So that's minus 15,500 for the inventory. Okay, so that's our cost. Let me see. And then Carson withdrew 6,200 of cash drawings, minus 6,200. So this should be less drawings, less 6,200. And then what about Liga? 3,700. And then the partnership borrowed 50,000 from Third National Bank. So that is uh, bank payable, 50,000. We have additional cash of 50,000. Then land and building were purchased at a cost of 25,000 and 50,000. So I have to bring it up. These are the current assets. Because there is a column here, I just want to move this here. We can total this. And then land is 25,000 buildings. Building, only building, not the um, buildings, it is 50,000. So property, plant, and equipment. That is. So how did, um, there is a difference here. We're missing the deduction in cash for the land and building that were bought, minus 75,000. So there's something that we're missing here. 159,300 and 155,600. We have to consider the cost of the sales that they had. The cost was 15,500 divided by two. So let's just compute that divided by two, 7,750. So we will minimize this 15,500 minus 7,750. This one also is 7,750. We're actually dividing 50-50 because the initial investment is the same, 50-50 or halves. So this one will now be the net of this and the net of this. Are they the same? Not yet. We will, um, ch we will change this. We have to change the formula. It should include all of this. So there we have um, total assets of 155,600 and total partners capital of 155,600. And we have also shown the reconciliation of the beginning and ending balances. Wait, I have to put this here for the sake of... Um... <laughs> and we can put that as capital as of 
June 30. The same with this. Okay, did you get that? Okay. So now let's go to problem 2-5, the January 1 balance sheet of Marvin Company, an in, unincorporated business. So you might think um, they are not going to pay tax here, not yet incorporated. So Marvin Company balance sheet as of January 1. So cash 25, inventory 50, total of 75. Here, no payable 20, capital 55. So this is, again, a simple balance sheet. There's really no categorization of what is current asset, what is liability. It's all already just very simple. So the following transactions took place in January. So here, we are being asked first what is required. Describe the impact of each transaction on the balance sheet and prepare a new balance sheet as of January 31. I would not um, pre I would not do a column um, explanation as we did last time because what we're being asked is simply describe the impact. So we will do that as we create a balance sheet. Okay. So I will do the balance sheet here. Marvin Company. Okay, so initially they had cash, they have inventory. And they had notes payable. They had capital. I suppose some things will happen here. So it began with 25,000. Inventory is 50. I want to put the total here just in case we will be including a lot more items. And here I will also put the total. The notes payable is 20, capital is 55, okay? So the following transactions took place. January 4, merchandise was sold for 12,000, cash that had a cost of 7,000. So let's, make, let's put the retained earnings here where we will incorporate um, sales, income, okay, income, and then we will add the income and we will deduct the expenses. So the first one is an addition of cash of uh, 12,000. And merchandise was sold for 12,000 cash that had a cost of 7,000. So there is a sale of 12,000. And then the cost of sales is 7,000. What is the equivalent in the other part? That is minimizing, reducing inventory. At the cost is 7,000. Okay, so we have balance. Let's just put this total assets, total liabilities, and owners and cap owners equity. Can I just drop this? Okay, you get it? And then uh, to increase inventory, Marvin placed an order with the star company for merchandise that would cost 7,000. So it is an order, they have not yet paid it. So we can put the current asset of accounts payable. They have just ordered 7,000. Okay, actually in number six, there is no, actually we, we don't increase yet the inventory because we have not received it yet. 
Okay, it's just an order. So in numbers in January 6, there's really nothing to do. But in January 8, Marvin received the merchandise ordered from Star and agreed to pay 7,000 in 30 days. So it is accounts payable. Normally, if it's someone for um, in terms of um, credit, uh, we bought our goods, it's accounts payable. So we will increase inventory by 7,000. Okay. And this one, how come we are not balanced? Seven thousand accounts payable. We will increase. Okay, I think. Can you tell me where I got it wrong? Um, plus twelve sold. Uh, inventory was seven thousand. Marvin received the merchandise. The seven thousand. Okay, I, I don't know if I included it here. Okay, it's just the total. Okay. Uh, January 11, merchandise costing 1500 was sold for 2500 cash. So cash was increased. Retained earnings in terms of the sales revenue has increased by 2500 Um, That's the sales. No. The sales was 3400 Sorry. I'm looking at... Let me just um, make this bigger. Where are we now? M Marvin received agreed to pay. Okay. Merchandise costing 1500 was sold for 2500 Have we put that? It was sold for 2500 cash. So that is additional sales. But then the cost is 1500 so inventory was reduced, and we will recognize a cost of sales that will reduce the retained earnings. So it's still balance. You get it? January 16, merchandise costing 2000 was sold for 3400 on a 30-day open account. So which means that this is accounts receivable from the customers. We will make another account here called accounts receivable. So... Uh, it's costing 2000 merchandise costing. So the cost is 2000 minus 2000. But it was sold for 3400 not in cash, but in accounts receivable. Okay, still balance. Marvin paid employees for the month 4200 cash. So we will reduce cash by 4200 Retained earnings in terms of the salary expense, we will reduce by 4,200. Okay, still balance. Marvin paid. The thing is, I think one thing you can do in order to see whether you are balancing is just to have a control account here, this one minus this one. So it should always be zero. So for me, like I always um, have to see that it is zero for every transaction. Purchase land for 20,000, so it will go here. Land, 20,000, was it made in cash? It was made in cash. So this is a transaction wherein everything happens in the left side, okay, asset part. Marvin purchased a two-year insurance policy for 2,800 cash. So what is this insurance um insurance policy it is an expense but still it's two years okay so there is we can actually make it into a prepaid in prepaid insurance and perhaps your question is should we already adjust it we haven't gone into the adjusting entries we're just saying that since this is for two years insurance we cannot say it is already an expense so most probably we will put it as a prepaid an asset okay we don't know yet when it would um, start. So for example, you are you're familiar with cars. When you register it, you are going to buy insurance for it. But what if you, you register it earlier this year and the insurance for this year is still going to be, um, it will end by uh, February 15. 
So you cannot make that as an expense because you're simply prepaying the insurance. So we will make this prepaid insurance for 2,800. It was paid in cash minus 2,800. Okay, so I think we're done.